we've arrived uh, pretty much on time, two o'clock in the afternoon, and um, we've taken one of the mooring balls here. That's always an adventure. It is, because I'm useless at it. <laughs> there's luck. Stuck in the plastic. I'm Barry. I'm Ansha. This is the continuing journey of Sailing ABC. Saturday morning here in Marmaris and we're going into the marina. But first, we're going to go to the fuel dock and fill up and pop out. Not too bad considering there were no marineros here to help us. And I thought that went really well. We've been in Marmaris Marina for a couple of days now and the things we've achieved so far are editing the latest video together, that's just rendering and will go up this afternoon, and we've also cleaned the boat on the outside so she's looking very shiny. Right now though, where are we going? We're going to the Chandler's <coughs> and then we're going to film some Marmaris to bring you guys because we haven't actually done that yet, have we? Not no, properly. not properly, no. Yeah. And hopefully uh, we can go and see the castle on the hill. Yeah. Mm. Come with us. Summer's definitely here, Baz, isn't it? It's very warm. It's lovely. Yeah, it's like being back in Australia. It's great. <laughs> Much better than the winter. <laughs> How would you feel if you woke up in the morning to discover that somebody had built a high-rise apartment block overnight and completely blocked your view? We have a guest. This promenade that we're walking along goes pretty much the full length of the bay here at Marmaris. Quite a few miles or quite a few kilometres I reckon. But we've we're not... been walking for three hours already so that's how long it is. Sure, <laughs> yeah. But anyway we're going to walk along until we go look that's enough now. <laughs> Just check out the rest of Marmaris by foot that we haven't actually looked at. So yeah we'll give it a go. How do you yes. like your steak? Rare, medium rare. Wait, what are you doing? Fucking ruined. <laughs> we walked a little bit away along the beachfront and found out that we were feeling hungry. Found this place. We've got a Texas burger and she's got a steak salad. Steak salad, yeah, And we got a great view yeah. of the water as well. Yes, yes, cool. Well, we made it this far along the promenade and we're going to turn back now. We're going to head into town and we're going to go to the Chandler's 
and uh, there's something else we've got to do in town I'll probably remember along the way and then we're going to head back to the boat. Heading back to the boat we decided to come in one road and uh, check things out mainly because we're looking for a uh, printer cartridge and we've just come in and noticed that behind us here is the Indian restaurant that we visited uh, way back in the episode that's up in the top corner of your screen right now and we've also noticed there is a big shopping mall here we don't see many of these in Turkey, so we're going to go in and take a look. So currently to get into a shopping mall or something similar, you're going to need one of the electronic HES codes on your phone and uh, they'll also take your temperature. I didn't have my phone or my HES code with me and they were quite happy to just accept Ansha's HES code off her phone for both of us. But they did take his temperature as well. Oh, they did. I was perfect as always. <laughs> thing to consider if you are coming to Marmaris is for getting around, the ease of getting around, is to rent a bicycle. They have bike lanes pretty much along all of the front of Marmaris Bay. It's very flat, there's no uphill bit at all. So rent a bike, an easy way of getting up and down and uh, some good exercise too. He tells me that now. <laughs> <laughs> This is a bike park rental area. So using a credit card, it's gonna cost you two lira for your first hour, two lira for every hour after that for 24 hours, and the charge for every hour after 24 hours is five Turkish lira, so they don't want you to keep it more than a day. This is something we've learned. Jinan in China's Shandong state is a sister city with Marmaris. How good's that? And they've got this park here to Recognize the fact. It was a part of me when I saw it from across the road, hoping and praying it was the outdoor eating area of a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Never mind. We haven't had Chinese food for. Oh, since we were in Spain. Oh, no. I don't know. No, no. no. before no, that. I think the last time we had Chinese food was probably two years before we left Australia, so I we're coming so. up a, coming up on six years now. <laughs> oh no, I had some with Liz and Mark when I went and stayed with them. Oh, all right, Take you're okay. There probably is uh, a main passageway to the castle here at Marmaris, but um, as we don't know where that is, we're just going to basically follow our noses and aim in the right direction and go up. But we should get there. I think at some point there's a sign. I Hopefully. seem to have seen that, yeah. yeah. Okay, if you see that sign, don't follow it, because that literally just takes you to the Castle Bar. Unless, of course, you want to go to the Castle Bar, in that case, follow it. That there will be it. Well, the sign says it's open every day from 10 to uh, 19, 30 hours, but today, It's got that on it, and it's not open for another 10 days. So, <laughs> I guess we'll have to get the castle next time we're in Marmaris. That was a bit disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's something to look forward to next time we come back to Marmaris, on the way back to Cash. Okay, right now, we're off to find the post office so we can mail our patrons their monthly postcards. Yes. If you want a postcard from us, check out the tiers on the Patreon website and the link is below and you might find a tier just for you. Yeah. 
And there's the post office. Off you go. S code lady. Job done? Job done. They're winging their way to our patrons right now. Coming to a mailbox near you soon! <laughs> I'm going to break the fourth wall here and let you into a little bit of a secret because postcards are difficult to come across in Turkey. Um, due to the digital age, probably postcards are becoming a thing of the past. So when we do finally find a shop that sells postcards, we buy in bulk. And here we've hit the mother load. <laughs> Bit of hot camera on camera action here. <laughs> Who are these guys? Where are they from? Smile. Fancy a nice, sophisticated watch. Close to authentic. <laughs> okay, we're back in our favourite kebab shop. This is the best one that we've found in Marmaris. And the, uh, the lamb donadurum here is just brilliant. It's just putting them together now. So if you're walking downtown and you come across this place, stop and say hello and tell them ABC sent ya. And finally, it's time to go to the Chandler's and uh, see how much money we can spend. <laughs> Foot sore and weary. Oh, look, it's been, um, it's been quite good. We, we got the postcards, we got a few things off our list at Chandler's okay we found out that the fort's closed but it is opening in 10 days time so we'll be able to visit it next time yep we will right now though it's back to ABC and uh, I'm gonna put my feet up and have a beer I think okay I might put my feet up and have a cup of tea and then I've got some hand washing to do Ooh, exciting it stuff is so exciting <laughs> I've thoroughly enjoyed my time in Marmaris, every single part of it actually. Even the walking? Yeah. I mean, it's not my, f <laughs> it's not my fault that my hips are slightly misaligned since we bounced onto a really heavy thing in the dinghy. Apart from that, yeah, I really enjoyed it. We got to see a lot more this time, didn't we? Yes, we did. Except the castle. But that's another story. So it's Thursday morning, it's around about 10 o'clock and we have got a four hour trip ahead of us. We're going to a place that I can't pronounce but the name is on the screen right now. We colloquially uh, know it as the Animal Farm because there's a restaurant jetty there and he has chickens and goats oh, and okay. sheep and all sorts of things yeah. just roaming around. Yeah. We, we stuck our nose in it the last time we went around that yeah. area just to have a look because uh, Kev told us about it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're sort of going to go there today. We're actually going to go there today. Yeah, yeah. stay the night. On to a morning boy. Yeah, we are. So that's the plan. I'm just about to call up the marineros and get them to uh, make sure we don't bump into anything in the narrow fairways here at Port Marmaris, from Netsal Marina, and uh, we'll get underway.
thoughts on this? Are you going to turn around and go? No, I'm going to come straight out here. Okay. okay. We've arrived uh, pretty much on time, two o'clock in the afternoon, and um, we've taken one of the mooring balls here. Um, That's always an adventure. It is, because um, I'm useless at it. <laughs> there's, lo there's lots of ways of getting the mooring ball, you know, in a position where you can get your line around it at the bow. And um, yeah, well, and she'll explain what she did to well, the uh, the boat hook. Okay, well, I was basically a. The first boat hook I used was this one and this is an extending one which is quite good because you get the length that you want um, but because it's got like a double hook thing when I hooked it into the to the line it actually got caught in and then um, I couldn't pull it up because either I wasn't strong enough or, or it, the mooring boy just had to stay on the surface of the water so I couldn't get this out <laughs> So um, that stayed attached to the first mooring ball we tried to get onto yeah. and we drifted backwards towards the second mooring ball that we're actually attached to yeah. now. I was panicking in case the end of the boat hook got actually onto the prop or wrapped itself around some part, you know, like the rudder, but it was it okay. So the second one that I started to use was this one, which I think I'll use in future because it's only got the one bit that can get caught up in anything. It's all very technical. Yeah. <laughs> now that I've got gloves that I wear, I'll probably find that this isn't slippy because the reason we got another one originally was because this just slipped straight out of my hand. Now the reason we got another one was because you dropped the other, you left the other one attached to another <laughs> mooring ball yeah, another and time, and yeah. then you had to go and swim yeah. for it and come back to the boat. But I couldn't hold on to it because my hand w was wet. My hands were wet and because this is like a, a shiny aluminium, see that's duct tape round there now. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you're going to get one with a shiny aluminium thing and no grips, wear gloves. So that's all I can tell you about mooring. Um, I can't actually tell you how to do it well because I haven't done that yet. <laughs> In the end, the bloke came out on his uh, little boat, his little tinny, and helped us get the line attached to the mooring ball. Yeah. He said that there is no charge for the mooring ball, it's free, um, but we were kind of encouraged to go and at least have a beer and a yeah. snack at his place, if not a full dinner. Which is so fair enough. That's what we're going to do anyway, because yeah. why not? You know? Yeah. And we're supporting the locals who've had a really hard time the last year. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're here for one night. Um, and it's weather dependent, of course. Yeah, it's, it's it's well protected, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'll show you around. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave us a big thumbs up down below. It really does help us out, and we'll catch you next week on Sailing ABC.